Hi. Uh, my name is Boyan Krosnov from Storpool. Uh, and I'm here to tell you about uh, high performance block storage system that we're doing. So we, we started doing uh, Storpool. We started Storpool about three years ago exactly with uh, the purpose of um, solving block, block storage for service providers who are hosting a lot of virtual machines uh, in, in their clouds. Uh, so our approach to solving this uh, is distributed software defined storage, um, which you know the traditional approach is on the right side here in storage we have like a big storage box from EMC or uh, Dell or HP, someone like that. Um, you have a network which could be fiber channel or Ethernet, and you have your compute nodes. Uh, and uh, the distributed storage approaches, distributed software defined storage approaches, you take standard servers. Um, you, you put some clever software on them and make a, a number of these, say 10 of these servers behave like one big storage system. Um, so why, why is now the, the best time for uh, switching your storage approach? Well, there are a few market trends. Uh, one of them is uh, cost of interconnect has dropped so much. So you can now get a 64 port uh, 10 gigabit ethernet switch for about $4,000, uh, which is about, say, 50 euros, $65 per port. Uh, and the other one is, uh, data market trend is um, multi-core CPUs. So the typical ser uh, hypervisor server today has 20 cores, 256 gigabytes of RAM. And a uh, good software-defined storage solution would take, say, one, maybe two CPU cores out of that and we'll leave the other 18 cores for your uh, virtual machines, right? Uh, so what do we do? Uh, Storpool does a distributed block layer, high performance storage system, running on standard x86 servers, uh, and we deliver it as software and services. Uh, so we, we help you along in designing the best solution, in figuring out all the details, installing it, upgrading it, all of that. Uh, the use cases, uh, hosting of virtual machines and containers on Linux uh, for service providers and private clouds and people. Our customers select Storpool because of performance and efficiency. That's the, the, the main re reason they choose us. Uh, and um, the problem with Ceph uh, in this is that it's a very good and scalable object store, but it really fails at delivering uh, fast, uh, high-performance box storage. Um, and here a few, uh, we did a performance test on the same hardware, Storpool versus Ceph, and here is the result. So Storpool, uh, th th this graph is um, CPU usage on the y-axis and uh, IOPS on the x-axis. So Storpool, the, the Storpool solutions are uh, with the green uh, and, and the blue line, uh, and Ceph is with the red line. Um, and, uh, with for a lot lower performance, for something like uh, 2,000 IOPS, uh, Ceph basically uh, fills the CPU of the three storage nodes. So it really ca cannot do more um, because the, the CPUs are full, right? Um, so in this example, which is random writes on, on the, in these specific configurations, Torpool does about seven times as many IOPS uh, with about six times uh, less CPU usage. So, so that's the kind of difference, about 50 times you can get uh, between a not so you know, optimized uh, solution and something like Storpool. Um, and as an end result, uh, you get, um, you know, because you, you have a high performance storage system, uh, you can do things like uh, run storage and compute on the same nodes. Uh, and you do that by uh, allocating one, uh, maybe two CPU cores if you want really high performance uh, for the storage system and the other 18 cores are left for, for your uh, virtual machines. Um, and this is a lot of advantages. So, so this kind of propagates through, through the whole stack and gives you a lot lower TCO, uh, less servers, less network ports, less space in the data center, a, a lot of advantages of, of doing it this way. Uh, so what's the deal with Storpool and OpenStack? Um, um, our, our customers, uh, our current customers uh, use these uh, custom hypervisor management systems. Um, and uh, we, uh, Storpool has kind of a custom integration with each of these custom management systems that our, our customers have. 
uh, and we see uh, Storeful is an opportunity in OpenStack to, to have um, you know, one integration with uh, the most popular hypervisor management system, and then everyone uses OpenStack with Storeful or OpenStack with some other storage system. So the things that, are, uh, that exist today, uh, there is a Cinder driver, uh, there is a Nova storage driver for attaching the touching volumes. Uh, it works with Ice, Ice House and Juno, and we are hoping to have it upstream in Kilo in the next release. And we are also working on a um, Glance backend uh, so that uh, creating a volume from an image would be instantaneous instead of ha having to copy the data over. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, Glance, that, that may be uh, something for you. Um, so I, I want to show you today um, the Storpool and OpenStack integration, uh, the Storpool API, and also some, uh, something on performance. Um, okay. No, not here. Hmm. All right. So this is your, you know, familiar OpenStack dashboard, um, and in here we have. Uh, a, an instance um, that is actually uh, using uh, Storpool. Um, so the way to uh, should have instance. All right. I think it's um, so, sorry. So there are two, two volumes in there. Uh, one is attached as uh, VDB uh, to that instance, to that virtual machine. The other one is attached to VDC. One volume is three gigabytes. The other one is 100 gigabytes. These are uh, volumes which are stored in Storpool. Uh, this is a running instance. So um, do you see that? No, it's not large enough. OK, let, let me just fix that. Um, it should be large enough, right? Um, This is the hypervisor that this uh, instance is running on. Um, and this is the, you know, the QEMU KVM um, process that, that, that's actually this specific instance. And you, you can see here uh, that, that that instance is um, on storable storage. Uh, th this is all, uh, um, you know, Provision through OpenStack, uh, you can uh, anything you do with, uh, you know, we support all, all the standard Cinder functions, so uh, volume snapshots, uh, everything. Uh, so you could, uh, this is a, say a snapshot which is uh, of this volume, uh, and if we want to, you c we can create another snapshot of it, just by uh, going over there and uh, giving it a name. So that's snap, uh, snap two. Create a snapshot. Um, and then we have um, hmm. then we have another snapshot. Okay, uh, it, it's all um, so m most of the operations are instantaneous. Uh, so the, you know, creating a snapshot from volume, volume from snapshot, creating a snapshot, extending the snapshot, attaching the snapshot to a virtual machine. That's all instantaneous. Um, so this is. Basically, what you know, the, the high-level overview of, of the um, integration with Cinder. Uh, there is nothing, you know, surprising there. We hope, like it should work as as, as a good Cinder backend. Uh, do you have any questions on this? Should I move on to the next thing? Okay. Good. So. Um, So the way the, the way it works one level deeper uh, is that um, there's a Storpool API and uh, w there is also a command line tool for it. Uh, and um, the, the, the Storpool CLI just makes an API call and, and gives you some information uh, with you know 
Um, this is an example of you know w what kind of information you can get from it. So um, you can get the same information obviously as JSON, uh, and if you want to do your own integration or extend you know the store pool OpenStack integration, you uh, just talk to our API and you you know ask the API create me a volume it creates the volume you ask the API uh, attach this volume to the specific host uh, it does that um, and um, let's you know let's do something um, so this is a list of the volumes um, let, let's create a new volume let's say uh, volume OpenStack Summit. Uh, we'll give it a size, and uh, we'll say that's a, a volume which is going to be on, on a hybrid uh, store pool pool. Uh, so I'm sorry about the long names. Just open, uh, Cinder likes to put these really long names, so it kind of screws up the, the layout a bit. Um, Right. Uh, so, so this is the volume. It's you know 10 gigabyte volume, three copies. There is nothing stored in it at the moment. Uh, so store pool is thin provisioned. There is nothing in there. You can also um, uh, attach the, the uh, volume to a specific host, uh, and that makes it uh, appear as a local block device. So there it is. Uh, and then you w you can work with that block device as you know with any say LVM logical volume or uh, any local uh, as if it was a local hard drive. Um, so one thing you can do, for example, is uh, you can write data to it. You, you can create a, say a, a file system directly on top of the block device, or you can attach that block device to a virtual machine. Um, l let's say in this example we uh, put a file system directly on top of the block device. Um, um, there it is, um, and, and that's you know that file system is now created, um, and we can you know say for example we mount that file system somewhere, uh, and then you have you know that's a, a local file system here. Um, other things you can do. Uh, you can create snapshots from volumes, um, so you know, um, volume OSS snapshot. Uh, um, we don't need to give it a name; it has an automatic name. Um, so now we have another snapshot, uh, and uh, these are actually uh, what I'm showing you now uh, are things like using Storpool directly instead of through through Cinder. Uh, so this this snapshot, for example. Is a snapshot which is not uh, not controlled through Cinder, um, and if we look here, um, so that's you know snapshot OSS 23, uh, and it doesn't have a Cinder name. Uh, so, so you can you could use Torpool for uh, OpenStack workloads as well as other workloads. You can have kind of a one large storage system and have OpenStack on it, uh, and OpenStack creates its own volumes and snapshots in the system. And you could have other uh, volumes, which are uh, volumes and snapshots, which are not controlled through OpenStack. Um, and yeah, uh, so that's the you know CLI. The our concept with the CLI is uh, absolutely every function you have uh, in the CLI, you also have I in a JSON API. So th there is nothing that. Uh, Everything you can do through the CLI, ev every single comment you can do uh, through the CLI, there is also an API call that does exactly that. Um, yeah. And um, that's the CLI API part. Um, and are there any questions on, on this part? Yeah. Oh, sh sorry. Sure. Uh, so you, you take a snapshot. Uh, we can even take you know the, a snapshot which is created uh, by, by Cinder, and uh, we say storeful uh, volume uh, new parent. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I can't paste this for. Mm, mm. <coughs> we'll use the short one. Uh, I just don't have a kind of a way to copy it, copy it and paste it back. Um, 
And so you have this new volume, uh, which is based on the snapshot which we just created. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, attach volume, new client four. Um, mount uh, dev store pool new uh, into media new. And you know, so that's that's it kind of a uh, th the same volume we just created, All right? Any other questions? Okay, uh, we'll let's move to performance. Um, so the um, performance numbers I mentioned. Uh, when, when we talk to a lot of people, they, they think these performance numbers are impossible uh, because you know the, the general concept people have is that uh, a hard drive can only do 100 IOPS, uh, and uh, that's not necessarily true. It depends a lot on the way uh, you write data to the hard drive, uh, and we do that in a, in an uh, unusual uh, way. Uh, so so Storpo is a um, the way we do that. Uh, is different from the way m most other storage systems uh, do it, uh, which allows us to do things like um, uh, okay. Uh, allows us to do things like. So th this is a, a random write with uh, 64, um, le le let's increase that a bit, with 256 parallel operations uh, on the volume which we just created from a snapshot, okay? Um, and we do, um, we just l launch this ra random writer, uh, and it does that at um, 16,000 uh, IOPS. Even though uh, this is a triple replicated volume on a cluster which has um, 28 drives in total, um, but um, okay, store pool, placement group, HDD list, uh, but only these which are uh, 24. Okay, so, so on, on 24 hard drives. So 16,000 random writes on 24 hard drives. Um, the, the way this specific volume is configured at the moment is that it uh, has two copies on hard drives and one copy on SSDs. Uh, so all the reads come from the SSDs, from the SSD. Uh, and uh, I, haven't, I haven't written the volume fully yet, and I mean kind of out of time. Uh, so I, I can show it to you later. Uh, so all, all that is come from SSDs, uh, from one client, from one store pool client, you can get about 100,000 IOPS. Uh, and uh, you can also, from each store pool server, you can also get about 100,000 IOPS. Uh, so in a cluster, it kind of scales uh, with the size of the cluster and the number of workloads on top. Any last questions? Uh, for the volumes we just created, uh, no, because we. Um, it's kind of out of my depth there, uh, so I. Uh, where is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's you know, just like a, any, you know, Cinder integration. Uh, okay. And can you show what you installed to the code? The package needs. I mean, what part is it uh, at, at the moment, it's not, on these machines, it's not packaged like an RPM. Uh, so, but, but there are um, kind of a few processes that run uh, to make StorePool work. So this is uh, StorePool's uh, cluster management service, the StorePool server, which manages local drives. Uh, this is StorePool API, uh, and this is StorePool client, the StorePool block device driver. Okay? 
And, all right, OK. And there are a few kernel modules in there. All right. And I, I, I can sit down with you later, because I'm really out of time. Uh, thank you all. Uh, and if you have any other questions, just come by our, our booth at C14. Thanks.